Today, I want to talk to you about my beef that I have with the M3 MacBook Pro. And also, I want to talk to you about the benchmarks that has come in for the M3 chipset. And without further ado, I think the best thing we can do is actually talk about the M3 chipset and also its Geekbench score, which has just been leaked in. So if you didn't know already, the M3 chipset and cores wise for CPU and GPU is very similar to its predecessor with the M2. Again, what we have is eight CPU cores. So this is four efficiency cores and also four performance cores. Then on top of that, we have the choice between either eight or 10 GPU cores. And most of us, I'm afraid out there, are probably gonna end up getting that eight core GPU. But yet yeah, Apple are claiming that it is faster than the M1 and also the M2, and yet keeping the same amount of cores. And to be honest, it does look like they are 100% correct here. Looking at this Geekbench score here, what's coming for the M3, you can see the single core score is 3,018 and the multi score or the multi core score is 11,631. This is a great improvement straight away. This is around about a 35% speed increase over, say, the M1 for multi core, and then it's around about uh, about 20% or so for multi-core on the M2 and then of course also the single core score compared to the original M1 we're talking about a 23 24% sort of speed sort of increase as well for single core performance what's absolutely fantastic really good to see that Apple have made that big leap there with the M3 but then this leads me on nicely to talk about why I have a problem with the M3. Well, specifically, I don't have a problem with the M3 chipset. I have a problem with the M3 MacBook Pro. Now, this year is the first time that we've got rid of the touch bar MacBook Pro. Yes! But all things aside, what Apple have done is that they've decided to use their 14 inch MacBook Pro design, what they have for say their M2 Pro and their M2 Max and the predecessors before that. And they've used that exact same design language, but one exception. The main exception is that we're actually missing one USB-C port just down here where the SD card and the HDMI port is just there. And you've only got two. Well, that's not a big deal. And to be honest, I love this new design of this MacBook Pro. It is a really, really good design. And it's all really amazing and really great with this M3 chipset until you realize how much it actually costs. It costs in the US dollars, 1,599 US dollars. And to me, that is a shocker of actually how much this costs. This is the most expensive baseline M chip device that you can buy, except Vision Pro, but I'm not even gonna go into that, on any of Apple's devices. So we're talking about like the Macs, the Mac Mini and things like this, one of the M2 and the M1 inside of it. Also things like iPads, even the iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch is actually cheaper than this here and by a long shot too. But I just don't get it why it costs so much to buy one of these with an M3 chipset. And the thing that makes me grind my teeth the most about this MacBook Pro is what will happen in 2024, where Apple will be releasing a different product again with an M3 chipset inside of it. And it is this. It is the MacBook Air or the MacBook Air, depending on where you are in the world and how you say the word Air. But my point is this. This product here costs 1,099 US dollars. It is $500 cheaper than this one here. Yes, I know we're not getting the mini LED display or has a ProMotion display. You know, only a few apps use that, by the way. Not a lot, to be fair. Also, you're missing that HDMI port and also you're missing that SD card port. But you can buy an adapter. Look, I found one here. It only costs $18 to buy and it can give you HDMI. It can also give you that SD card slot and some more USB ports. Well, you can just plug into this and it will just work absolutely fine. Not in the factor as well, well, this is far lighter. It gives the same amount of battery life as this M3 MacBook Pro 2 or the M3 MacBook Pro that is going to come out. And to me, it just doesn't make sense of why it costs $500 more. In my opinion, I just cannot see why to pay $500 more 
for this M3 MacBook Pro, yes, with all these nice new features that I just talked about, when you can just wait probably around about another six to eight months to get your hands on one of these with an M3 chipset put inside of it. It just doesn't make sense for me why you need to buy one of these. And that is why, guys, I am not going to be buying myself an M3 MacBook Pro. Don't get me wrong, putting down my MacBook Air there, I will be buying an M3 Pro MacBook Pro. A lot of pros in that sentence there, wasn't there? But I will be buying one of them, but I just cannot justify of why people generally need that M3 chipset in a body like this. It's just like saying having a Ferrari with, say, a tiny engine inside of it. It looks cool, it looks gorgeous, got all these great features, nice tires and all these great gizmos and things, but the actual engine underneath it it's not that powerful. And to be honest, what you should be getting is something with a bit more horsepower behind it, like an M3 Pro and also the M3 Max. For me, I think Apple have missed out on opportunity here. I believe what should have happened is that there should have been a design or it's a hybrid between this and this here and brought that out and maybe the price of that should have probably been more like about say 1,399 US dollars or at a push I would say 1,450 dollars. I would say any more than that but 1,599 dollars for this I just really really just do not understand why Apple have done this. Now, a lot of you are going to be commenting, well, Matt, the reason why they've done this, obviously, it's to do with money. Well, yeah, duh, yeah, I do know that. You know, everyone wants to make money. But I just feel that, like the Touch Bar MacBook Pro wasn't really that successful, with especially having the M2 inside of it. I just don't feel that many people are probably going to go for one of these with an M3. I could be wrong. But personally, I just don't see what the point is, especially knowing the fact, like I say again, this is going to come out with an M3 inside of it. And also its 15.6 inch brother will also have an M3 inside it. And yet still, that will be cheaper than one of these. The other thing to point out as well is that personally, if you're in the market, if you do want to have this design of a MacBook Pro, Personally, I would be buying myself, say, an M2 Pro or even an M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14-inch instead of this 14-inch M3. If you look at the Geek benches here and just look at the comparisons here between them, this is the M3, right? And this is what's going inside an iMac. It would be very similar to what you get inside the MacBook Pro by one or two points and multi-core and single-core. But now look at the M1 Pro. This is the baseline M1 Pro, the binned version, as we call it. Look at the difference here of the screen. Score. If you want to know what the scores are, it's around about, say, about 10% sort of less in power than an M3, and yet it's around about, I'd say, probably about 20% power less with what you get with an M3 compared to the M1 Pro. And even if you got yourself an M2 Pro, it's going to be even faster than this. Definitely multi-core score and obviously single-core score will be a little bit less. But the thing is, you can actually pick them up for around about the same price as this device here. But yet, you can actually pick one of these up with an extra USB-C port inside it. And also, you've got that Pro chipset with more cores. So, you know, you can flex up those muscles in other apps too. And personally, in my opinion, I think it'd be better to get a refurbished M1 Pro and M2 Pro MacBook Pro 14-inch than get Getting yourself an M3 one or if you can afford it do step up and get yourself the M3 Pro model instead. But there we go guys that's me ending all of my rambling on and everything like this but that's my thoughts about this in my own honest opinion. Could be wrong could be right you know there's gonna be people probably writing down in the comments below how wrong I am but you know this is just my own opinion what I want to share with you. And on that note as well guys it's time to wrap up this video so if you have enjoyed watching it please do press the like button also at the same time you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons please also make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. And until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.